everybody so today I'm in my kitchen because I've had this computer in here working on it so I can have it hooked up to the router so I can go on the internet with it but anyways this is a computer I've always really wanted and I actually got it about three months ago and I just haven't made a video about it but now that I got it working good I wanted to make one about it so you're probably wondering what do I have I have an original iMac G3 I don't know if this is actually original or not. This is a um, late 2001 slot loading model. It has a 600 megahertz power PC G3 processor and 512 megabytes of PC 100 RAM in it. Works pretty good. It's currently running OS 10.4.11, which is the maximum update that you can get on the iMac G3. I bought it from a thrift store, uh, like I said, three months ago for thirty dollars. I think it was. It was either twenty-five or thirty. And uh, while everything works on it, it's in not so great condition. It's got little scuffs and scratches everywhere on it. Uh, the CD drive doesn't work, but that's the only thing on here that does not work. And the biggest flaw on here is the cracked back casing. You can see there's a huge hole in there and then a the little beige piece that goes under the front there. Camera's going out of focus. Come on. There we go. Anyways, and the little beige piece right there where it's supposed to be white, you know, it's got a big crack in it too. But other than that, it's not all that flawed. Um, for some reason, on the bottom door on the bottom to access the RAM and the airport card there's a bit of rust I don't know where that came from I don't know if this computer has been wet before but it was in an old dilapidated shed in the back of this thrift store so if it has seen water before I'm not very surprised but the good thing about it is is that it actually works and so I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up for you all right, so you're probably all aware of what a CRT monitor does to a camera with the difference in refresh rates. I'm going to try and get it as focused as best as I can. I hope it's not too bad. But anyways, let's go ahead and boot this thing up. Like I said, it's running OS 10.4.11. And after that, I'll show you some more stuff about it. Beautiful chime. I don't know why, but it's very easy to hear the hard drive on here. The hard drive is a bit whiny but it's still in good condition. Like I said, um, everything works except for the CD drive. When I try to put a CD in it, it just automatically ejects itself out. So that's the second slot loading drive I have a problem with. Drive on this one, nor do drive on my iBook G4 works. So. so you can see there, it starts up fairly quick. And when I got it, it was dual booting iOS, not iOS, it was dual booting OS 9 and OS 10.2, I think it was 10.2.4 maybe, I think it was 10.2.4, and uh, you're probably wondering how I got it on um, 10.4.11 on it without using the CD drive, well it was actually a pretty good workaround. Now you can boot uh, any old Mac with a PowerPC and an open firmware and get it to boot off USB if it's not capable of doing it already. But I wasn't able to do that because first of all I have a Windows keyboard, I don't have a Mac keyboard. Second of all, you can't do um, boot, you can't do key combinations on a Mac while it's booting up with a wireless keyboard, and that's what I got. But I found a little work. I found a little. Um, work around there. I booted it up in OS 9 and then I put in the Tiger CD into a USB CD drive hooked up to the iMac and then I went into the settings and then set the CD in the USB CD drive to be the thing for it to boot off of and then I launched the install Tiger app on the CD and then it restarted and it booted right up into the Tiger installation. So that's pretty much how I did it. But anyways, we're gonna go into about this Mac here. As we can see there. Mac OS X 10.4.11, processor 600 megahertz, PowerPC G4, memory 512 megabytes. 
And when I got it, it has 7, 6, 768 megabytes, 768, I keep mixing up my words. Anyways, add that much RAM in it, but one of the sticks of RAM in it was corrupt, and then I found this out whenever I decided to um, check everything on the internals. I took this computer apart and put it back together. After I booted it up, it gave the beep code for faulty RAM, which at the time I didn't know what it was, but I know now. And so I took the stick in question out and then it just booted right up. And at some point I want to find another PC 100, 512 meg stick and so I can get it up to one gig. I think it supports a maximum of one gigabyte. So I don't really have anything much on here right now. Uh, just all the different stuff. I got iCab installed as the internet browser. Um, it's a couple years old for the PowerPC version is at least. You can get the latest version for I think it's OS Mountain Line and up. But it is a pretty good browser and although you have to pay for it, it's pretty much like WinRAR. It's free, but it'll keep giving you an annoying reminder about buying it even though it works fine. I mean, there's no difference between, you know, buying the full version or free version they've all got the same features it's kind of like winrar but really that's more or less all i've got on um os wise i guess right now i want to do some little experiments with it i might try and install linux on it there's a version of um debian linux for the power pc i might try that out you never know but anyways uh, os wise there's not really much to look at but I will show you a little thing I'm having with the airport card in here. This has an original Apple airport card. You can see there, it's showing my Wi-Fi network. So when I connect to it, let me type in my password here. Click OK to connect. And it'll say starting connection. And then it sits there and turns for a little bit. And then that, there was air connecting to the airport network. I don't know why it does it, and even if I click try again or something, it never turns out right. And one little thing I was going to point out, one last little flaw, and it's probably just because it's been sent for so long, the CRT image, I don't know if you've noticed it yet or not, is way off, like it's way off to this side, and then in a way it's kind of a little diagonal, like it kind of runs down at an angle like that. I don't know if you've noticed it, but if you look really close, you can see the image is kind of diagonal in a way <sighs> B Bishop PCM would be so mad about that but I don't care but anyways we can look at the internals real quick all there is is just the RAM and the airport card let's go ahead and shut this down first let's turn it over and look at the internals alright so now I got the computer flipped on its side I would flip it on its back but I want to be careful on it because of that hole on the back casing and there's the access door for the RAM and the airport car and you can see there the rust that I mentioned there's definitely got to have been some water in there at some point and really if this computer's been rained on or something before I'm seriously not surprised about that all right you've got to have a coin open the access door you put it in this little groove here and then you just turn it I just use a little quarter I really don't want to take the camera off the tripod so you guys can just take my word for it while this computer is in such bad condition the motherboard on the inside is absolutely perfect right there's the top of the airport card but the motherboard is absolutely perfect there's no flaws with it from what i can see there's no blown caps or anything now i don't want to take this camera off the tripod and deal with all the pain of trying to get adjusted just so you can see the motherboard so you will just have to take my word for it, but trust me, I'm telling you the truth. But anyways, I'm going to take out the airport card here. Alright, so here we have the original Apple airport card. It's in its little adapter. But that's the card I'm having problem with, problems with which is weird because it's also in just as perfect condition as the motherboard is. No scuff, scrapes, or bumps, or anything. You'd think the motherboard would all be messed up with the condition this thing is in. It's very surprising how this little guy's lived so long. It's 
putting the airport car back in a slot. And anyways, right there, we've got our 512 meg stick of PC100 RAM. That's what came in the computer along with the second stick, which I said was no good. And that's what was given a error. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Well, everybody, thank you for watching my video about this iMac. It's certainly a pretty good computer. But anyways, if you like what I do, comment, rate, and subscribe as always. And I would like to say that, yes, recently I have had a lot of computer videos. After I kind of took a little uh, summer hiatus, I actually ended up losing all my um, capacitors and stuff that I had planned to blow up for YouTube. Uh, my mom accidentally threw them away. Or well, at least that's what she says. She probably did it on purpose. But anyways, I do have an old Panasonic TV that I just took apart. And I'm probably going to get all the capacitors and crap out of it and blow, it, blow them up. I also got a full CRT display from there. 21 inch CRT. That's going to be freaking fun to destroy. And I'm so going to do that. I really want to blow it up with a shotgun. But anyways, as always, thank you for watching. And like I always say, I will see you guys later.